do you know what these things are? Today's video, we're looking at 4x5 photography, but with a slight difference, we're talking about 120 film in 4x5 cameras. So listen up if you've always been tempted to shoot a 4x5 camera, but perhaps you've not got the equipment, not being able to develop or process your 4x5 film. So today we replace this with this. Hello, Matt here from MrLucky.com. Today's video, I'm looking at 120 film backs for 4x5 cameras. Now, I know a lot of you are perhaps Leica shooters or 35mm shooters, but before you click away, if you're stuck in a rut with your 35mm camera, the best thing I could probably recommend to anybody is to try out a 4x5 camera. But the first problem you have with a 4x5 camera is you often don't have the equipment that you need to be able to use the 4x5 camera, or more specifically, perhaps be able to develop or scan 4x5 film. This was exactly the position I found myself in when I bought my beautiful 4x5 speed graphic with the Aero Ektar lens. I was absolutely dying to use that amazing Aero Ektar lens, for my portraits, but I didn't have any 4x5 film backs. I didn't have a way of developing 4x5 film and I don't have a dark room. So what I did was I looked on the internet and I found that you can use 120 film backs on a 4x5 camera. So how do these work? If I flip these over, it'll make a bit more sense to you. So there we have a 6x7 film back, a 6x12 film back and a 6x9 film back. All of these take standard 120 film and you can see by the width of the dark slide that they all work with the, the 120 film. Now how does this sizing compare to true 4x5 film? If we lay it over the 6x7 there's obviously quite a noticeable difference and with the 6x9 and again the 4x5 is a lot bigger but when it comes to a 6x12 film back you've got almost the same width as 4x5 film you just don't have the, the same height it's what two thirds the the width of 4x5 film. What this means is if you enjoy shooting panoramic landscapes such as myself, instead of shooting a standard 4x5 film back and then cropping the top and the bottom, you just instead use a 6x12 film back and then you have no film waste whatsoever. So that was one big advantage I found when I first got into 4x5 photography. For those of you not up to speed on 4x5, with a 4x5 camera you use a 4x5 sheet holder like this and you load each side with one sheet of 4x5 film. That means each holder will give you two shots and then you need to carry as many of these holders as you want. So you want to do 10 shots, you will need five of those. So it becomes quite a lot to carry. Another big advantage, say you want to shoot panoramic landscapes on location, is you only need to take one back, which is so big, which is roughly the same size as say three standard 4x5 film backs but then you have unlimited photos because obviously once you finish your film you just rewind it like you would on a normal medium format or 35mm camera unload your 120 film pop in a new roll of 120 film and you can do all this in daylight the problem with 4x5 is you need a dark room or a dark bag to unload and reload and that can be a bit of a pain especially if you're on location or if you're trying to carry minimal equipment. This aspect worked really well for me when I took my 4x5 camera to both Poland and France for model shoots and by only needing one back and then having multiple rolls of 120 film it was very easy and less equipment was needed. In terms of manufacturers you can buy Horseman film backs often called 120 roll film backs if you're looking on eBay and this one is unmarked but I believe it's made by Cambo if anybody recognizes that logo. If I had a preference, I'd probably go for Horseman film backs because they're more compact and size is often everything when you're trying to pack light. In terms of how do they work, if any of you have used a normal medium format camera, it's very much the same thing where you put your, your film in one side, you drag it around across your pressure plate, connect it to the other side, and once it's in place, shut the back, and then you just need to attach it to your large format camera. I looked at the used prices on eBay and you can pick up Horseman film backs for around £100. If we use this Intrepid Mark II as our model, as you're probably aware, this is a 4x5 camera, I can show you how the film back attaches to the camera. So you'd focus your picture as normal on the ground glass, <laughs> and I'm laughing, I forgot that I still had the masking tape on for using 120 film backs on this camera. So what I did, I added masking tape, so I know that I have to compose within, within this range. And you can see from the pen marks, I understand whether it's 6x7, 6x9, or 6x12. Once the photo is composed, you remove the ground glass. 
And then very simply, we just attach the roll film back. And then before you take a shot, the same as you would on a medium format camera, lift the dark slide, take your picture, put the dark slide back in, remove your back, then run your film, if there was film in, and then take your next shot. Really, really easy. And then I know what you're thinking, why would you bother going to all this effort if you're going to shoot 6x7 on a 4x5 camera when you could just use something like a Mamiya 7, Mamiya RZ67 or any other 6x7 camera. The main reason is, and the reason I do it, is because you have near a limited creative ability with a 4x5 camera that you don't have with a 35mm or standard medium format camera. What I mean by this is you can add rise and fall and then you can also tilt and swing the lens. This is the main reason why I bought 4x5 cameras in the first place. Not for the extra megapixels, but for the ability to change the plane of focus. And if you still need a reason to shoot with a 4x5 camera, get yourself something like an Aerovector lens. This lens is amazing for portraits. And here it is mounted on my 4x5 speed graphic. Again, as seen in my previous 4x5 large format video. My speed graphic has a slightly different film back setup. So for a graphics back, you need to drop your 120 film holder between the ground glass and the camera. So in this case, all you do is slide it in like, and then take your picture. I'll just show you that from the side so you can kind of get a better visual. So you place your 120 back between the dark side and the camera on certain cameras. It depends on which camera you're using. But they're the two main ways to, to mount a 120 roll film back. So in summary, what are some benefits to shooting 120 film backs on a 4x5 camera? Number one, less equipment to carry around and in the field. Number two, amazing for pano photos where you don't want to waste film by cropping the top and the bottom of the image. Number three, 120 film for me is faster to shoot because you don't need to faff around with a lot of different 4x5 film backs trying to remember which bits of film you exposed, which bits you didn't expose. 120 backs are a lot more foolproof so they work really well, especially for beginners getting into 4x5 cameras like I did when I first bought my camera. And perhaps lastly, one of the biggest benefits Shooting 120 on a 4x5 camera allows you to use standard pads and tanks for 120 developing and most flatbed scanners such as the Epson V800 I use also let you scan 120 film where they may not let you scan 4x5 film. For example, the Epson V600. What about cons? Is there no benefits to shooting 4x5? Of course there are. If you shoot true 4x5 film, you get the true 4x5 very shallow depth of field look if that's something you're going for and say you're shooting portraits on a Aerovector. And secondly, if you're going to shoot 120 film, you may be asking or shouting at the, the computer, why don't you just use a medium format camera if you're going to use medium format film? For example, if you're going to shoot 6x7, why don't you use the RZ, the Mamiya 7 or say the GF670? If you're going to shoot 6x9, you could pick yourself up a very cheap vintage 6x9 folding camera, for example, or perhaps the Texas Leica, the Fuji 690 cameras. Those will all give you 6x9 negatives without needing all the, the bulk of 4x5. And they're much easier to shoot handheld. If you're a 4x5 shooter yourself, let me know in the comments below which cameras do you use and do you use 120 backs. I'd love to hear the different gear that people are using. If you enjoyed this video or just like this camera, please hit the like button and then YouTube will share this video with more potential 4x5 shooters. And as always, a massive thank you to my patrons. Bye.